So I'm talking to you today about mobile um, image making for the 21st century and generative drawing, which is a term that relates to a certain style of drawing that I'll talk about. Um, so just first off, apologies, I've got a bit of a hay fever, so I might make some odd noises throughout the presentation. So um, that's what that is. Uh, but the presentation will talk about the utility, a lot of the benefits of drawing. I want to try and encourage you to actually start some drawing practice in your own life, debunk some myths around people that think that they can't draw, and then look at some of the advantages that we have available to us with digital devices. So um, what I'd like you to do if you have um, any sort of drawing implements around you, a pen, pencil, or even an iPad or something like that, is just start uh, doodling while I'm talking. Um, and so it might end up looking like the scribble on the left, or it might be a pattern that you start creating like in the middle, or it might start forming some kind of a character. But the main aim of this is just to start acclimatizing yourself to, you know, using a tool for drawing, feeling that tactility of the pen or pencil on the paper, and just starting to get um, reaccustomed to that as we become more and more separated from, from these sorts of um, image making tools um, with the modern times. And, and these modern times are very much a time of accelerated temporalities. Um, it's very much become the defining characteristic of our times. Um, and it leaves us with a general impression of powerless and incoherence and a fragmentation of our perception and consciousness. And a lot of us might relate to that feeling of being fragmented, of feeling like we're always behind and trying to keep up. Um, and that was in 2007, cultural theorist Paul Virilio said that, and things have gotten, I would argue, even more fragmented since then. And add to that the disruption of the last couple of years with the pandemic, the constant disruptions to our routines and liberties and, um, and all of the sort of uncertainty in life that we um, are faced with. So in the context of that, I think that drawing is a really um, more beneficial and more vital tool now um, than ever before in terms of building mental health resilience, um, slow living skills, being able to slow down in the face of these accelerated temporalities, and as a tool of productivity and utility, which I'll talk about. So there was a poll conducted by a British mainstream readership um, in 2020, and it ranked artists as the number one non-essential job. Um, and on, at the top of the list of essential jobs were doctor and nurse and garbage cleaner, garbage collector and cleaner. Um, ironically, those uh, jobs at the top of the essential jobs list were also topping the list of the jobs that I don't want to do. So you can make of that what you will. Um, but into that, in 2021, there was a survey conducted by the Australia Council for the Arts, and they surveyed 260 people who identified as graphic storytellers and artists. And it was the research was led by a group of um, comics researchers and academics, and they found that graphic storytelling is really um, finding its way into all of these avenues of, of industry that um, you wouldn't have thought so. So things like health and education and product design um, and emerging opportunities in terms of internal communications, in mapping, strategic thinking and problem solving. And so there are all of these really exciting opportunities opening up um, in terms of um, essential jobs, in terms of jobs that have utility. And not only that, uh, drawing is a really valuable tool for conceptualization um, and communication of ideas. You can use it as a way to get down things quite quickly in a way that text or language might uh, not be able to all of the time. And it's also a vehicle for experience and ideas. So you can use it to um, document your life and to express yourself through symbolic content in a, in a unique way. And so um, in response to the previous uh, utility or uh, essential jobs survey, in the London Evening Standard, um, it was found that the arts have never been more uh, uh, essential to our mental health and well-being. And so what, why would that be? So there's, there's a lot of documentation of research in art therapies that found um, 
all sorts of benefits of drawing and art practices. So a brief period of art practice can um, elevate mood. It can be a great form of um, communication, as I've sort of alluded to, that text and language alone don't have the same capacities. It can lead to a greater quality of life from just this daily practice and escaping these accelerated temporalities. It can enhance the body-mind connection as your hand gets more coordinated. Um, it can alleviate anxiety. Just taking time away to, to sit down and draw um, can really be beneficial for that. And through this practice, your general creativity through all other domains of your life can be enhanced. This can lead to great personal change and increased self-awareness and sense of identity, particularly if you um, engage in other aspects of um, things that the drawing is a building block of, so like making comics about your life and stuff. Um, and again, drawing is the foundation for all of these visual arts. So why, why would um, drawing be so beneficial for so many different realms of mental health? Well, um, literary um, founder, uh, literary, um, I've forgotten the word, <laughs> a professor of Joseph Carroll found that we have evolved dispositions for um, participating in shared forms of imagination through st stories, songs, dance, and visual images. So this is an evolutionarily developed thing, um, part of our expression. So if we look at if we look at children, most children draw instinctively. They'll scribble, um, but there's a certain age around puberty where this engagement and progression ends, and it's typically where people start to become more judgmental and self-critical. And, and that is commonly attributed to the people that continue drawing. Um, it's thought that maybe they have a certain talent or whatever, but there are cultural reasons as well around that. So if you look at Japanese children, um, they do not stop drawing at the same rates as Western children. And one of the um, big reasons for that is they're immersed in this um, manga, this Japanese cultural uh, medium that transcends genre, transcends demographic. Um, it's not a lowbrow medium as, as comics are thought of as here, and everyone's into them. So children are surrounded by this, and it prov provides this consistent graphic schema and lexicon. So this consistent language, um, visual language of of um, symbols, of the way things are drawn, that children can copy, and then it provides an essential building block from the early scribbling phase into a more advanced phase. So this is sort of what's missing. It's a cultural, it's a culturally um, instigated um, motivation for stopping uh, drawing. So another way we can continue with drawing is to think of it as as um, cognitive play with pattern so if you think about um, anything really the more you do it the more you can get into it and so um, Brian Boyd says the more frequent and intense our response the more powerful the neural consequences and so a lot of the times we think about drawing as something as you want to get a certain outcome but what's actually most important is that you enjoy the process so we can look at flow, which is a um, state of mind that you get into when you become totally absorbed in a practice. And so that can become um, facilitated by having clear goals every step of the way, by having immediate feedback to your actions, which you have with drawing, you see the image being drawn as you go along, by having a balance between challenge and skill. Games developers know about this, where they have games that people don't have um, too, challenge, too much challenge or don't get bored. It needs to be the right balance of challenge and skill. And once that happens, once that state and that um, situation is created, action and awareness become merged. Distractions become excluded from the consciousness and there is no worry of failure. So that self-critical voice disappears. And then what happens is your whole sense of self-consciousness disappears. And we might all know this from engaging in any sort of activity that we enjoy. We get into a state of flow, the sense of time dissolves and the activity becomes autotelic, which means that we enjoy it for its own sake. We enjoy the practice 
for what we get from it and not from what it gives us or what we can, um, you know, having a nice image at the end of it. It's the experience that counts. I might just skip through this for time's sake, but look at some, some digital drawing tools and considerations to, um, to bring to your consideration. So with digital devices, we've got so many benefits on top of normal drawing. We've got in these devices an unlimited amount of canvas sizes, of rev resolutions. We don't have to carry around all of these materials. It's all with us. We have all of the tools, all of the brushes, all of the inks, the watercolors, the oil paints. You have an initial outlay of the digital device, but you save a lot of money down the track from all of these mediums. And using layers with different art making programs, you can layer image on top of image on, on top of image, and you don't have to worry about how, how those mediums will interact. So it's really handy. Um, you can do time-lapse recordings like you can see here, um, which is a really great way to sort of share what you've done and review it later on. And that sharing and collaboration can be really useful from a professional point of view where you might need to collaborate with teammates um, and bypass the stage of scanning and all of that, it's all ready to go. So in that respect, um, digital drawing can really help us to be almost an instant pro and bypass that worry of I'm not good enough. So digital brushes have a line stabilization so they can make your lines look really nice without having to work, you know, have that years of practice. Um, if you're drawing a um, an environment or a portrait like you can see here, I can draw directly over the top of the image and get an accurate representation, whereas I need a lot of experience and knowledge of um, visual sort of analysis strategies to be able to see something and, and try and get a faithful representation. It's faster. You bypass a lot of the stages of, of planning um, and you don't have to wait for paint to dry and stuff like this. So it's much faster. And you've got control Z, so you can undo things. So it really removes that worry of, you know, if I'm doing a watercolor and I put down the wrong color or I splash it over the wrong area, that can be a big worry, but I can just undo things digitally. So I have freedom to take risks. I have freedom to really explore and experiment. And that can be useful for facilitating this sense of flow, these flow states. So I just share with you some of the different types of digital drawing devices, you've got graphics tablets. So this is sort of like a little flat featureless tablet that you draw on, it's connected to your computer and you look at the monitor, but there's a disconnect between here and here that you need to overcome. Pen displays, you draw on the screen, but that's connected to your computer and to a power source. So you've got a lot of cables to worry about. And to me, the best situation is the tablet computers like your iPads where you can draw on the couch, you don't have any cables, you don't have any disconnects, but it's a little more expensive. Um, here's some of the top uh, devices and software just from the last year, um, and there's many more. So there's a whole scope of options for every um, requirement and sort of budget. And I'd just like to close in just reiterating um, drawing as a really foundational um, art form that supports all of these other forms. And it has so many different um, emerging utilities in industry, in, in business, and in just communicating to your teammates, for example, at work, um, as well as these benefits of mental health, where we get so much from, from engaging in these little pockets of time every day. We escape the accelerated temporalities, the like notifications, and just get into this exper experiential focus, um, just engaging with drawing, for the experience of it and not for the nice drawing that you might get afterwards. And finally, I'd just like to say that um, drawing on paper and drawing digitally are quite complementary. So I would engage, uh, encourage all of you to do both and um, enjoy. And here's my contact details. I'm right on 15 minutes. Thanks for your time. I'd love to see if you've hopefully um, done any drawings from today or if this has prompted you to start drawing.